Have you heard that ketogenic therapy and a keto diet can help with mental disorders, metabolic health, and type 2 diabetes, but you aren't quite sure how to get started? Well, at Metabolic Mind, we're here to help. We're a nonprofit dedicated to sharing education and resources about ketogenic therapy, and today we're going to review how to get started. Welcome to Metabolic Mind, a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group, transforming the study and treatment of mental disorders by exploring the connection between metabolism and brain health. Thank you for joining us on this journey. This video was inspired by the comments on some of our prior videos. So first, thank you to all of you who leave comments. We love to hear your ideas for future videos and to hear about your experiences with ketogenic and metabolic therapy. So, so thank you. But before we discuss the basics of starting ketogenic therapy, please remember our channels for informational purposes only. We're not providing individual or group medical or healthcare advice or establishing a provider-patient relationship. Many of the interventions we discuss can have potentially dangerous effects if done without proper supervision. So consult your healthcare provider before changing your lifestyle or medications. In addition, please recognize that people may respond differently to ketosis and there isn't one recognized universal response. Here's the first most important part. This is ketogenic therapy, not just trying a keto diet. So work with your clinician to establish health goals and, and how you're going to monitor for success and safety. Develop a plan in conjunction with your healthcare team. Now, they may know nothing about ketogenic therapy, and that's okay. You can still engage them in a discussion of, of what successful treatment looks like and what dangers you have to look out for that would suggest inadequate treatment. This is the same discussion you'd have whether you're talking about medications or a diet. So, so have that conversation first. And we have other videos on you know, which labs to follow or the risk of mania with ketosis, uh, as well as you know, what you need to know before starting ketosis. And we recommend you and your clinician familiarize yourself with those resources. But next, here's the second important point. Do your homework before you start. Don't just jump in and say, ah, let's see how things go and we'll figure it out along the way. That is a high chance of not only not working, but also being potentially dangerous. So prepare ahead of time. So what does that mean? That means having a firm understanding of foods that are keto-friendly and those that aren't. And make sure you're stocked with the friendly ones at home. Find an online resource with recipes and tips for maintaining ketosis. Dietdoctor.com is one that I used to work for, but there are many others out there. Now, it's ideal if you can find a keto dietitian or health coach, but we recognize not everyone will have access to one. So, so basic starting advice is, is pick two recipes that are your go-to recipe, recipes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and make sure you have the ingredients on hand. Also, make sure you have keto-friendly snacks available. Now, often you snack less when you're eating a ketogenic diet, but when hunger hits, that's often when people deviate from their plan if they aren't prepared. And also, here's the next point, get a ketone monitor. You can use finger stick device like Keto Mojo or breath meters like Biosense, although many versions of each exist. We don't recommend urine strips as those are less detailed and less helpful for directing keto therapy, but testing your ketones is key. Next, be prepared for a keto transition or a keto flu as it's called. Plan to hydrate much more than usual and supplement with electrolytes. Again, there are lots of options like Element or Keto Chow electrolytes and many other options or just good old-fashioned salt in your food and, you know, taking magnesium supplements. But again, be prepared. Don't get caught off guard without enough fluid or electrolytes as you're going through the transition. Now, when you are transitioning in, into ketosis, many experts recommend slowly reducing your carb intake over one to two weeks to gradually transition. And that may lessen the risk of keto flu or psychiatric symptoms such as hypomania. Keto dietitians Beth Zubek Kanya and Denise Potter recommend replacing one meal at a time. It's a good idea, right? For example, have a keto breakfast for a few days without changing your other meals, then both breakfast and lunch for a few days, and finally, all of your meals as keto meals. Or I guess another alternative is you can just cut the carbs in half at each meal for a few days, then in half again, and finally make sure every meal is keto after a week or two. Just make sure you're replacing the carb calories with fat and protein foods if you're getting hungry. And how do you know if you're in ketosis? Test, test, test. Sure, there are other ways to help you guess, like acetone breath and you know cognitive changes, but, but there's no need to guess with testing so easily available. So get your ketone meter and use it. Eventually, you may only need to check once a day or even once a week when you're an old pro. But in the beginning, you may need to test multiple times a day. 
when in doubt, test. And what levels should you shoot for? Well, this one may need to be individualized, but in general, nutritional ketosis is considered at a blood level above 0.5 millimoles per liter, and many recommend levels of 1 to 2 for psychiatric benefits. Again, there's a fair amount of variability in this, so test and see what works best for you. Now, those are just some of the initial basics you may want to know before starting ketogenic therapy. And remember, you don't have to do this alone. As I mentioned, it's ideal to work with a keto coach or dietitian, but if that's not a possibility, there are numerous online resources that that can help with the details and provide support for maintaining ketosis. We'll link to some of them in the description. Find and use support wherever you can get it. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe, and please leave a message about future videos you would like to see. I'm Dr. Brett Schur, and we'll see you here next time at Metabolic Mind, a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group.